Hello, good afternoon students of mine, especially for my Science 8, right? I hope you're having good time staying at home today. Um, right now, we're having uh, this called outbreak of the COVID-19. That's the reason why we have uh, suspended our classes until March 22. But lately, we have a new news right now that Baguio City has uh, submitted themselves to community quarantine, that they've suspended their classes until April 12th. Now, I get to see that some few students are actually complaining of uh, not doing anything at home. That's the reason why right now, um, they're actually eager to go back to school. And I hope that you're doing fine at home. You try to be healthy, uh, boost your immune system by eating uh, nutritious food, uh, having enough sleep, and taking your uh, exercise and reducing stress. Now, as I mentioned last time in our uh, before we part ways last Friday, is that I'm leaving you with a handout of the lesson for this week. Now, after this lesson, I'd like to just emphasize that I'll be making a quick request that will be done online that you are to accomplish. Now, uh, I recommend that you better watch this video lesson first before getting into that uh, quick per quiz because I'm going to make that one only taken once you know, and try to see if how effective this uh, video lesson would be. Now, you get to see that we're done with the organs of your digestive system and I think it's pretty much it now. You have your four divisions of your uh, your digestive system. We have your mouth region or your oral cavity. Uh, the other one was your gastrointestinal tract or simply your GI tract. You have your uh, accessory organs and lastly your mesentery. Now today we're going to discuss about how the process of digestion is done and what are the different processes involved in it. Now, if you have your handouts with you, I'd like you to open your handouts and let's get to see um, the objectives of this lesson. So we have at the end of this lesson, you should be able to give function of the different organs of the digestive system and identify the processes of digestion that serve to provide energy to the body. Now, if you get to see it right now, uh, the event that takes place in your uh, digestive system is invo uh, involves what you call this uh, six processes. We have number one, the ingestion, propulsion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and excretion. Later on, I'll get to explain that one, one by one and maybe translate that one to the layman's term. Uh, first things first is that in the process of digestion or the process the first process of digestion which is ingestion um, whenever we we get to, to see food they look good they smell good our brain right away recognizes that stimuli that allows our mouth to actually salivate no especially when you get to uh, think or think of uh, green mangoes for maybe example green mangoes uh, you get to see that whenever somebody mentions about green mangoes uh, they get to celebrate right away or anything the the favorite food that they have but right now they get they can't have no I hope that you're you're eating nutritious food right now and not just binging with any junk foods that you are doing while watching Netflix no so that's the first that's the first process no? you can call, call that one ingestion uh, and it involves taking in the food when you talk about ingestion it's taking in of the food so anything that we take in in the first region of your digestive system which is your mouth region when you take it in there that's what you call your ingestion now there involves now what you call your salivary action and your physical breakdown or simply what you call chewing hindi naman po siguro na may mga pagkain tayo na hindi natin ginangalngal dapat po ngalngalin natin yan in that in that case whenever Mangalngal tayo, it is actually being acted by your saliva. And the process is called chewing. Or if you get to go to higher terms in the scientific field, we call that one your mastication. Or mastication po, simply tinatawag natin dyan, chewing. Alright? So, whenever you ingest, it triggers the release of your saliva. But then again, your saliva is really very important since digestion happens 
no? First happens in the mouth. Alright. Now it involves also that during that process of the ingestion, you get to taste the food and even smell the food. Now that's the reason why bakit po tayo tumataba kasi masarap pong kumain lalo na kasi nalalasahan natin yung kinakain natin. Kaya kain tayo ng kain, lamon tayo ng lamon, hindi na po natin tinitingnan kung gaano na po kabigat yung timbang po natin. Kaya hinay-hinay po sa pagkain. No? Hindi po masamang kumain, pagkulang, hindi maganda, pag sobra, hindi din po maganda. Alright. Now, when you talk about your your uh, the, the saliva reaction, there is what you call an enzyme related to your saliva, called your salivary amylase. Now, this salivary amylase is an enzyme that breaks down your, your what do you call this one, your starch. That's the reason why, as I mentioned last time, you try to get a lump of uh, rice and you try to mix it with your saliva before you get to swallow it. Not later on, if you get to let it sit for a while and your mouth is mixed with saliva, you get to later on feel or even taste that it becomes sweeter and sweeter because an enzyme called salivary amylase is acting on your rice which is actually composed of starch that breaks it down to a simpler substance. That's the reason why you get to taste the sweetness. Alright? So, in salivary amylase po, in your handout, you get to see the word amylase. You can actually place the saliva there as an additional note. Salivary amylase. Alright? Now, we're done with your ingestion. Pag, no, naswallow na, na po at natapos na po doon sa mouth region or sa oral cavity and you get to swallow that one, then that's actually your, what you call your ingestion. Now, we go now to the second part of the digestive process we could which we call your propulsion. Yung propulsion po, pag nasa esophagus na po siya. Now, you get to see that in your esophagus is actually a long a tube. This actually helps your food or simply what you call your bolus. Later on, I'll get to talk about your bolus. No. <clears throat> Where and in it, it, it pushes your food from the mouth down to your stomach. Alright, so... Later on, I get to also let you see that your digestive system, specifically your 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 esophagus, has this uh, known uh, process that actually happens, which is what you call your peristalsis. Right in your in your notes, you get to see that peristalsis is actually an involuntary type of action. We're in. That's the reason why if you get to swallow your food, that's the voluntary action. No. You get to choose either you swallow or you not swallow food. But afterwards, if it gets, if you get to decide that it's you swallow the food, no, it starts to go into your uh, di, uh, your your esophagus that it gets now to uh, that there involves a process called peristalsis. It's actually a wavy movement down to your esophagus that pushes the food, or simply what you call that the ball of food inside your stuff, your esophagus, which is your bolus, that pushes it through a wavy movement and down, down goes to your stomach. Alright, as I mentioned, no? after the propulsion, the propulsion is just a very small small process, we go now to what you call your digestion. Now, in the whole process of your digestion, it only you only get to realize that your digestion, yung mismong digestion, is just only the third process of the whole process itself. Alright, so when do you start your digestion? It's actually start when the food from your esophagus now gets into your stomach. As I mentioned last time, you have your two types of your digestion. You have your mechanical digestion, in your chemical digestion. Now let's get to talk first about your mechanical digestion. When you talk about your mechanical digestion, ito po yung mga simple na physical na ginagawa ng baga, ng anong ng katawan po natin dun sa pagkain. No? Um, yung pagngalngal natin, no? It's actually a physical or what you call your mechanical digestion, no? Dito unang nangyayari yung digestion kaya kailangan nating paliitin sila. To the point na kung maliit na sila, mas easier na maswallow. However, if it goes to your stomach, hindi po enough yung size ng inalngal natin. Kailangan mo paliitin pa natin until it reaches to what you call your cellular size po yung, yung pagkain natin. Saka natin mapapakain yung cell sa ating katawan. Kaya, no, when you talk about your mechanical digestion, we have several examples. We have your churning, we have your segmentation, we have your mastication, which is chew, simply chewing in your oral cavity. You can, you can see that one in your 
hand outs. Alright? We we'll talk about this time the number two, which is your um, chemical digestion. We have uh, it involves now different chemicals or simply your substances like your acids and your enzyme. Now, in your uh, handout, you get to see that in the first, uh, in the second bullet, uh, you get to see the 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 word gastrin uh, triggers the stomach to produce what you call your pepsinogen, your mucus, and your hydrochloric acid. Now, these are some few of those enzymes and acid that is found in your stomach. Do you know that your hydrochloric acid is as, as strong as what you call your muriatic acid, right? So, kailangan po ng acid doon para pampamelt, pampadigest po ng pagkain natin. At the same time, we have others like your mucus for it to be able to be uh, um, suabi yung, yung pagkatama sa chan natin na hindi po siya nakakagasgas kasi kung sobrang dry po yung pagkain, hindi naman po maganda sa chan. Alright, we have your pepsinogen. Later on, you get to We'll go to talk about that one, no? Or later on, your pepsinogen, yung gagawa ng tinasabi natin enzyme na pepsin. Alright, in your small intestine, you get to also encounter, uh, as I've mentioned last time, you have your bile, no? Yung apro, na sinasabi natin yung pampapait sa pinapaitan, yung green na, green gooey something na pampapait nga nung pinapaitan. Uh, yun po yung sinasabi ko for lipid digestion. And as I've mentioned in your previous handout, I, I get to uh, translate your lipid. Simply, your lipids are what you call your fats. Alright? So, pampatunaw, pampas digest po ng taba yung tinatawag nating bile na nananggaling sa liver po natin. Pero yung liver po, yung liver po na bile na yon ay inilalaglag nila po doon sa small intestine. That's the reason why you get to see that in your handout is actually related to the small intestine because it is where your liver is actually dumping the bile into the small intestine. And aside from that one, you have also the other accessory organ which is your pancreas which I mentioned last time is the problematic organ when you get to encounter a disease called diabetes. Alright, so sa pancreatic juice po meron po tayong maraming mga, mga enzymes. So, we have your amylases, you have your proteases, your lipases. No? Ito po amylases, ito po yung nagbe-breakdown ng carbohydrates or simply your starch. Your proteases po, ito po yung nagbe-breakdown po ng mga proteins. Oh, yung kinakain yung karne, yan, proteins po yan, resin protein, uh, your, your legumes like your nuts and your, your mungo or whatever, or th those uh, same, no? Ito po yung mga proteins, kailangan po natin i-break down sila into amino acids, kaya kailangan po natin ng proteases. And let's say we have your lipases. Ito din yung mga for the, the fats, no? Sa mga, yung mga tinatawag natin yung mga fats nyo, kailangan natin i-break down into two types, what you call your glycerol and your fatty acid, no? Para tanggapin po sila ng cell po natin. Alright. So afterwards, pag na-digest nyo po natin yung pang-tatlo, no? Digestion. So let's, go, let's have a recap. We have your ingestion. We have your propulsion. And uh, we just talked about your digestion. But then again, sinasabi ko nga, useless po yung digestion natin kung wala po itong part na ito, tinatawag po natin ng absorption. Now, sa absorption po, as I've mentioned, it happens in your small intestine. Now, if you're going to zoom in your small intestine, meron po tayong tinatawag natin dyan ng mga buhok-buhok dyan sa small intestine natin na parang brush. No? Uh, just imagine a brush. I don't know if I have brush here. Pero parang brush siya. No? Na pag dumaan yung pagkain, tapos may brush dyan. Isipin natin may toothbrush. Uh, kuha tayo ng bagay dito. Wala akong toothbrush, pero meron akong ganito. Toothbrush, toothbrush. Ah, alright. Drawing ko nila. I've got to see that. You know, ito po yung small intestine natin. Tapos meron po tayong pagkain dyan na dumadaan going to this portion. No? You have your, your... Your small intestine is actually composed of what you call your villi. No? V... Lie. Yan, vilay. Para po siya ng mga small protruded hair-like structure dyan. Na pag dumaan po yung pagkain, nagkakukos ng increase in what you call your surface. Ang hirap magsulat po. Surface tension. Let's put this one into an analogy of what you call your your brush. Ito po parang parang a brush hair yan. Pag dumaan yung pagkain at sumagit dyan, no? Ito po yung mga kumukuha na po, nag-aabsorb na po ng mga, no, nag-aabsorb na po dito ng mga 
pagkain, yung mga nutrients na dinadaanan ng pagkain. No? The longer it will travel, the more nutrients it will be absorbed because later on, makita po natin puno-puno mga hair-like structure yan, ang ating chan, which is what you call your villi. To be honest, if you're going to zoom in your villi, you get to see another set of hair-like structure, what you call your micro. Ne, hirap. Villi. Alright. So, the better surface uh, surface tension ang nangyayari dyan. Kaya, surface tension po dyan. Kaya, do pagdaan ng pagkain, sumasagid dyan, kinukuha po nila yung mga nutrients ng mga pagkain. And, oh, on the walls of your uh, your small intestine, ito pong walls, meron po tayong connected ng mga blood vessels dyan. Kaya dyan po, naghihintay yung mga bloods natin na hindi wala pa po silang nutrients. Pagdaan po nagpagkain, nakuha po ng mga microvillis and villis yung mga pagkain, yung mga nutrients. Then, pag napuno na si isang blood, then, deliver po all throughout the different cells of our body to be nourished. Ganun po yung nangyari dyan. So in your handout, you get to encounter what you call your capillaries, your lacteals, your stomach, and your large intestine. Ito po sila. Meron silang mga bloodstream po dyan, no? Na pwede nilang pag, ah, pa, naghihintay po. Ah, isipin po natin yung, yung mga blood po natin. Parang mga jeep po dyan na walang pasahero. Pagdaan po ng pagkain, yung manutrin sa absorb, mapupuno po yung ng pasahero po, yung mga jeep dito, yung mga blood natin, saka kung napuno, deliver to all parts of your body. Alright? I hope that you get to understand the analogy. Alright, so you get to see that a picture there in your in your handout no, about uh, the intestinal villi and microvilli increase the surface area. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, wrong term. Instead of the surface tension, I'm talking about the surface area pala. Alright, so we go now to what you call your, yeah, the fifth one, which is your assimilation. Alright, it says here, involves building up of complex uh, substances after absorption. This process is the opposite of your absorption. So from fat, fatty acid po, magiging fats. Amino acid po, magiging proteins. Monosaccharide, maging polysaccharide at essential compounds such as your hormones and are synthesized. So, yun nga po sinasabi niya atin. No? Whenever you get to eat something, then, minsan po, especially for those sedentary people who are eating and kain, tulog, kain, tulog, na wala namang ginagawa. Tapos fatty or oily pa. Yung pong fatty acid po, or yung mga fats po na kinakain natin, di ba, bini-breakdown yun during absorption para po tanggapin ng cell natin. Kasi yung mga fat molecules po ng pagkain, masyadong malaki na hindi po tatanggapin ng cells natin. So, ibi-breakdown po yung fats natin to fatty acids and glycerol. However, if no, wala kang physical movement, hindi ka nag-exercise, hindi po magagamit yun minsan ng katawan natin kasi sobra-sobra po. So meaning, para ka lang nag imbak doon or you just get to preserve those fats, fatty acids that are not used. So therefore, there is what you call a process of assimilation na ibabalik niya ulit from the broken down into the complex one which is from fatty acids to glycerol going back to what you call your fats. Kaya po, dahil dyan, wala po, hindi po nagagamit yung, ng katawa natin yung mga pagkain. In that case, uh, what happens is that that's the reason why you get to, to gain weight. That's the reason why you get to have extra fats in your in your in your stomach, no? Ito po yung mga bilbil natin uh, under your under your arms or wherever, no? You get to see that later on you get to uh, tawag natin. Uh, you get to uh, increase some more weight. And more or less also, if you get to all, uh, ito naman, amino acid, hindi po nagamit kasi sobra-sobra. So, ibabalik po yung amino acid into proteins. Yun, yung proteins po, ito po yung mga, ano, pero something, protein is some, not, not, not something uh, very, uh, very nakakatakot compared to what you call yung mga fats na naipon sa katawan natin. So, there goes that, no? If you get to talk about those different stuff. Now, lastly, we have no what you call yung pinakalas. So, recap po tayo bago po tayo, bef uh, bago po tayo punta sa last. Now, we have your ingestion, which is the first one. We have your uh, propulsion. No? So, pro propulsion, pag-propel na ng mga pagkain ito, pababa, pupunta sa chan. As it starts to go to your, to your stomach, no? you call that what? And meron na po tayong tinatawag na digestion process. 
So, meron po tayong dalawang types, your chemical and your uh, mechanical. Tapos, after your digestion, nandun po tayo sa absorption. Ito po nangyayari sa small intestine. After absorption, pag hindi nagamit masyado, pupunta po siya sa process called assimilation. Pang lima. And lastly po, pag talagang wala nang magagawa, meron na po tayong naubos na po natin, nakuha na po natin yung mga kakailangan natin sa pagkain-kinain natin, meron na po tayong tinatawag na the process of excretion. No? Kailangan muna pong ilabas yan kasi hindi po na maganda sa katawan natin. When you talk about your excretion, simply the keyword there is what you call your elimination. Alright. So, undigested food, elimination of the undigested food. So, meaning po, yung mga pagkain na dumadaan siya, dinadigest po, pero hindi po lahat kayang i-digest po ng digestive system natin kasi either uh, wala po talaga ng silbi yung naiwan na doon or hindi na kayang i-digest ng katawan natin. Kaya, no, you get to see that later on, no, there is what you call your undigested food or simply what you call your feces. Feces or simply for other terms, they call that one stool. No, but the one that goes out from your body is what you call your feces or your stool and the process involved is what you call your excretion. So kailangan po nating ilabas iyan. All right. So <clears throat> Sinasabi ko nga last time, no, it gets to patambay muna yan temporarily doon po sa rectum until such time na mapupuno yun at ititrigger po yung mga sense uh, mga mga sense or uh, sense sense stimuli doon po sa muscle ng anus na para sasabihin niya na oh puno na kami lalabas lalabas na kami all right so your key points here is that the digestive system events are ingestion propulsion digestion absorption assimilation and your excretion all right so i think that would be all and masaya siguro na if you get to have your kind have your handouts there and I'd like you to answer the one in your check your understanding maybe some few there will be uh, some uh, some of my uh, questions that you will be answering in your quipper quiz now once again i i'm encouraging you to please watch first this uh, video before you're going to answer the one in your quipper uh, for you to be able to get a better score now Heads up po, uh, until such time na hindi natin alam yung situation po because of the COVID outbreak. Um, Kali, please stick for a while, uh, especially in terms of being online because then again, ayoko pong mag-stop po yung klase natin na walang nangyayari. And then again, uh, it's bad to be bored. No, wala kang magawa, makakapagsala ka. Mas magandang pang meron tayong gagawin. So, ang gagawin ko po, Pag-present po ako ng hinay-hinay po ng mga lessons para meron po tayong gawin aside from the house chores, no? Alright. So, I encourage you to please watch this video. Uh, if you get to have a chance to to watch this one through YouTube, I'd like you to at least subscribe, no? And put that like button and maybe click the notification bell for you to be able to know that I sent a new lesson for you. Alright, until then, um, nag-ingat po kayo. Uh, stay at home, maging taong bahay po tayo, home body po tayo this time uh, strengthen your immune system and be with your family, alright? Huwag po tayong maging parte ng problema uh, kundi maging parte po tayo ng solution um, this too shall pass uh, let's pray for this uh, for this event ngayon uh, which is not good na sana po matatapos po ito at wala na pong mamamatay Alright, until then, this is your teacher. Um, good afternoon and God bless.